Welcome and thank you for joining us for the Word of Life midweek message. Are you ready to be encouraged to experience growth in your walk with Christ and to pursue all that God has for you? Then grab a pen, open your heart, and get ready to hear this week's message. You can find us online, follow us on Twitter and Facebook, and remember to log in each week for a new eChurch message. Good evening, everyone, and welcome again to Word of Life's midweek service. My name is Pastor Donnie Haynes. And I will be bringing you the Word of the Lord tonight. Praise God. We've been teaching on our Sunday morning service. We've been teaching for about a month on John chapter 15. If you'll turn your Bibles to John chapter 15. We've been, the name of our sermon has been Remaining in Me. Remaining. Learning to remain. Learning to remain. Learning to remain. Learning how to stay connected. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's have a word of prayer. And then we're going to talk about being, getting connected, staying connected to the Lord Jesus Christ. And how does one do that? And what are the promise of God to those of us who will do that? Father, we love you tonight. We praise you. We magnify glory to God, the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, that our hearts are in your hand tonight. And as the rivers, you will turn our hearts in the direction of your will. And I'm asking you for the spirit of wisdom tonight, Father, and the spirit of revelation for all the under the sound of my voice. And Father, take my heart in your hand, and I'm asking you, Father God, to let me speak your words as I ought to speak in Jesus' mighty name. And everyone said amen and amen. Speak as I ought to speak. Hallelujah. To speak as the oracle of God. Scripture says, if any man speak, let him speak as the oracle of God. Amen. We're not, we're not just throwing around, around knowledge here. We're not just trying to uh, be religious here and burn time. We want to give you the unadulterated Word of God with a clarity, understanding, and love. Amen? So, John chapter 15, verse uh, 1. I'll read it out of the NIV. I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit, He prunes it so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples." This may be one of the greatest sections of Scripture in the entire Bible. It's, it is an outline of, uh, for prosperity in your life. Prosperity in your spirit, prosperity in your soul, prosperity in your body, prosperity in every area of your life. If you if you've taken notes tonight, I've, I've been teaching this in our church for some time, but I want to get teach it here on line to you all. Number one, if you're taking notes, Jesus says, I am the true vine. I am the true vine. <clears throat> That's verse one. I am the true vine. He says, my father is the gardener. Now the true vine, when you look at the vine, a, a grapevine, that it's, it's a, a runner that goes out and it has little Branches connected to it. The grapes grow on the end of the branch. The grape does not grow on the vine. It grows on the branch. All right? But the vine, Jesus, I am the vine, you're the branches. Notice this, there's one vine. It's singular. I am the vine. No plural there. He goes, you're the branches. That's plural. One vine, a lot of branches. All right? So he says, I am the true vine. Now, there's a lot of religions in the world, and most every religion has some good in it. Now, Jesus says, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. 
I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. He's not one of the ways, he's not one of the truths, he's not one of the lives. There are not many ways to God. There's one way to God through Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world. Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the. The being singular. There's one way to God, and it's through Jesus Christ. <clears throat> so he says, I am the true vine. So you can realize that if he's the true vine and the, the sap, the juice, the, the, the nutrients flow from the root system <clears throat> through the vine and will go to and through the branches. On the end of the branch grows the grape, grows the fruit. Now when we look at the, we look at the branch, we look at the fruit on the end of the branch, we can determine whether that branch is connected to the vine or not by whether or not the fruit is withered on it. Amen? So if you're looking and you see someone, and we're not here to judge people, we're not here to criticize people, we're not here to point out people's faults. But Jesus said, you shall know them by their fruit. Now it doesn't mean when someone is having a bad, rough week, and they step over and they get angry and they start fighting with their spouse or start murmuring, complaining and having a little conniption fit. It doesn't mean they're not saved just because they step over into the flesh. It does mean that they're not abiding in the vine at that moment. And when they're not, when they're not staying connected in the vine, then the love of God cannot fall. Now let's look, let's look at the fruit of the Spirit. Galatians talks about the fruit of the Spirit. It's what? Love. Joy, peace. Now it's not the it's not it's the fruit that belongs to the Spirit of God. When you stay connected with the Lord Jesus Christ, the presence of the Holy Spirit through you begins to bring the love of God. Now it brings the love of God to you, and when it comes to you, then it's able to come through you. We often try to tell people, uh, you you just need to walk in love and be more kind. Well, it's true. But, how, but God didn't expect you to be kind in your own strength. God expected you to be kind with His kindness. Say, so what are you talking about, preacher? <clears throat> the scripture in Romans chapter 5, verse 5, says the love of God has been imparted into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Now, when the Holy Spirit puts His love within us, we can activate that love by worshiping, praising God, magnifying His name, singing. So, how do, you know... The, if the love of God's in me, why doesn't it come out so easy? Because it's in your spirit. The love of God's not in your soul. It's not in your mind. It's in your spirit. And so, it ha- so the Bible says, be filled with the spirit by speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing, making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks unto the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of all glory. Amen. So we, by singing and, and praising and thanking God, as we begin to worship God, praise His name, think upon His name, then the Spirit of God begins to rise up within us and it activates the love of God in us. Glory to God. It's not your love, it's His love. You know when you're experiencing the presence of God, <clears throat> hallelujah, glory to God, hallelujah, glory to God, like it's coming right here and now, hallelujah. Praise your Lord, glory to God. <clears throat> hallelujah, praise God, here He comes, praise God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Glory to God, Hallelujah. The Bible says to be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. We saw in John 15, 5, Jesus said, Without me, glory to God, you can do nothing. Without Him, we need to teach people how to tap into Him, praise God. There is a major difference between you trying to live a godly life and the Spirit of God enabling you to live a godly life. There are so many Christians that are so tired. There are so many Christians that are so worn out. There are so many believers that love Jesus with all their heart, but they are weary warriors. They are beat down, they are tired, and there's, they need a refreshing. Well, praise God, I got news for you. The Holy Spirit, He is the vine, or He is the, pre, he's the, he's the sap that's in the vine. He's the invisible part of the Godhead. And while we abide in Jesus Christ, we abide in Him by faith. We don't see Jesus. So we have to worship Him in spirit and in truth. That means spirit means our, our spirit man has to connect with him. Our spirit man is invisible. The, Jesus is invisible to our eyes. But the inside of us, our spirit has to connect with him. God is a spirit, the Bible says. He is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. God is a spirit. You cannot see him. But he can be experienced, praise God. 
Hallelujah. Even right now, I feel the Spirit of God just coming in from behind me. just like a wind. just like a wave coming in behind me, moving out towards you. Praise God. Hallelujah. And you can tell the very second the Spirit of God comes. Can you tell when the wind begins to blow? You can feel it. You don't see the wind. You've never seen the wind in your life. What you see the wind do, you see the results of the wind. The wind blows the leaves. So we think, oh, the trees are shaking. No, the, tree, the wind is moving the trees. The wind is blowing against the leaves. Glory to God. The wind is picking up things. A tornado pick, can pick up debris. You see the debris, but you don't see the wind. You see the result of the wind. Praise God. And we may not be able to see God, and people in the world may not be able to see God, but they can experience the movement of God, the living, the, 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 the what's the word I'm looking for here? Praise God. The, the very life of God, this vivid, uh, uh, experiential, uh, where well, the scripture says, taste, and, taste of the Lord and see that He's good. When people experience the love of God through you, when they experience the goodness of God through you, when they experience the joy of the Lord through you, when they experience the life of God through you, the zeal, the boldness, the, the, the very, the, this tangible life, then they are aware that there's a living God. Hallelujah. Praise God. The Bible tells us to be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. Praise God. Put on. He says, put on. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill and obey the lust thereof. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ as you begin to worship God, as you begin to praise God, as you begin to confess glory to God, His Word. Hallelujah! Praise God. Then the Christ, hallelujah, the hope of glory, Christ in you, the hope of glory begins to arise and His love arises, His joy arises, His peace arises. Praise God. Have you not heard? We read these scriptures. We hear these scriptures. Praise God. But there's such an anointing here. Praise God. We see and hear these scriptures. We talk about the peace of God. It's not your peace. It's the peace of God that passes all human understanding. It's called the love of God that passes all knowledge. It's not your love. It's God's love in you. He has imparted His love into you. And, it's, and, and we can almost say it's just like these, these, uh, these recipes, just add water. As we just begin to stir, the Holy Spirit's referred to as water. And as we begin just to worship God and praise Him, and just begin to think upon His name and speak His name out quietly underneath our breath, the Bible says, let God arise and His enemies be scattered. I say it often, almost every week, I, I, make a, I allude to it. But the Scripture says, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water, praise God. That's what you're experiencing right now through me. Living water, praise God, is moving through me right now. I can feel the tangible anointing of the Holy Spirit moving through me. I know the difference between when God's moving and when I'm moving, praise God. But the Bible says to stir up the gift of God that's within you. Stir it up. What made the Spirit of God come to me and come through me as I'm preaching to you today? What happened was I began to speak the Word of God. And as you speak the Word of God and just start stepping out in faith to speak His Word and to act on His Word, then the presence of God, what? He only, God watches over His Word to perform it. Mark chapter 16 says, And, and the Lord went together with them, confirmed, pre, as they went preaching, He went and He confirmed the Word with signs following. Even after Jesus was taken to heaven, he says, the Lord, and the disciples were not to preach. It says, and the Lord went with them, working together with them, confirming the word. Say that out loud, confirming the word. Confirming the word with signs following. One of the signs of the, of the Holy Spirit, well, for a believer, what we're talking about today is a sign of the love of God. When the touch of the Holy Spirit happens in your life and you stir up the gift of God and you're beginning to praise God and you're worshiping Him and you're magnifying His name and you're beginning to love on Him, the presence of God comes. I say comes to you. Many times it comes, it comes into the room. But many times Christ in you, He's, he's in you. And, and the Bible says He's in you, He's with you, and He shall be in you. So the Spirit of God can be on the outside and the Spirit of God lives on the inside. Sometimes I experience God rising up within me, and sometimes I feel the Spirit of God in the room. Right now, I feel both. The Spirit of God's rising within me, and the Spirit of God's in the room. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God forevermore. Hallelujah. I tell you, when the anointing comes upon you, the Spirit of God says, here's what the Word says. It says, when the Spirit of God, when, when, when Samuel poured the anointing oil upon Saul, Saul was turned into another man. When the Spirit of God comes upon you, you are operating in the power of God's might. 
The Bible did not tell you to be strong. It told you to be strong in the Lord and the, and the power of His might. We have to learn how to tap into the power of His might until His love flows to, to us. Praise God. Hallelujah. Do you know the scripture says, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, I give unto thee. Praise God. I don't have any silver and gold on. He said, but what I have, I give to you. When you begin to strip the, 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 the spirit of God within you, you begin to speak the word and the anointing, it will always come to you. Folks, it's not just for me. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered. As you begin to worship God and praise Him, His Spirit will come to you. Now let His Spirit flow through you. <clears throat> You'll feel His love. You will receive His love as the Spirit of God begins to flow up and rise up within, within you. His love. You begin to experience His love. When you experience His love is when you can give it to others. Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have. Well, how come most many Christians don't walk in love? Because they don't stir up the gift of God, of the gift of love within them. And when they say, if they would get loved on by the, by the Lord, so how, do the, how does the Lord love on you? You start praising His name. The Scripture declares, draw near to God, He will draw near to you. And I can almost hear people think, well, I know that. It's not a matter of knowing it, people. It's a matter of, it's a matter of doing it, praise God. There's a lot of people you know should eat right, you know you should, you should take care of yourself, but you don't because it's work and it's just hard. You've got to ask yourself the question, how bad do you want it? Praise God. Hallelujah. How bad do you want it? How, how desperate are you to change? How desperate are you to experience glory to God, the love of God? How desperate are you to have fruit that remains? How desperate are you? How much do you want it? Don't settle for the trinkets of this world. Don't settle for the nonsense of this world. God has called you to reign in life through Jesus Christ. And as you, as you continue to abide in Him, His love will come to you and you'll experience the love of God and you can't help but to give it away. You'll want to give it away. You'll have something to give away. Don't say you don't have the love of God in you. Romans 5, 5, the Bible's declared that the, His love has already been imparted into you by the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, praise God. Let me get my breath here. Hallelujah. Boy, I tell you, I could preach like this and just go on and on and on. But I want to get this lesson into you. Praise God. Hallelujah, praise God. Lord, we bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you for that unction in the Holy Ghost. Praise God. He's just sitting on me. Praise God. Hallelujah. <clears throat> praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Such an anointing here. Praise God forevermore. He's the lover of my soul. I love him. Without him, I can do nothing. I say it many times to you. My mama had an old saying because a man needs to know which side his bread's buttered on. <laughs> you need, a man needs to know which side his bread's buttered on. It, it just amazes me how many preachers, how many people just, they can just live their Christian life and, and, and never even want to experience the presence and the power of God. I don't even know what, what I, I, it's like people that want to get married, but they don't really love their spouse. I, I, I don't get it. I don't get it why you'd want to have Jesus in your life unless you just want fire insurance so you don't go to hell. But, that, but Jesus has come that you might have life, that you, you and I might have life and have it more abundantly. When you're walking in love and you're experiencing God's love, is there any bigger abundance in life than you being loved by God? Well, I know Jesus loves me, but I just don't feel it. It's because you don't go stir up the gift of God within you. The love of God is already on the inside of you. As you begin to honor His name and speak His name and just give honor to His name by thanking and calling on the name, Thank you, Lord. Bless the name of the Lord, the scripture says. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that's within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. Who forgiveth all of your iniquities, who heals all of your diseases. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that's within me. Bless his holy name. Just bless, bless his holy name. Just start to praise and bless the name of the Lord and just lock yourself away where people don't hear you. Lock yourself away where you're not self-conscious or you're not conscious of other people listening to you. And just begin to love on the Lord and push everything else out of, uh, 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 into the shadows and you bring yourself into the light of Christ and you watch, the, you watch God on the inside of you begin to respond to you. He lives on the inside of you. Hallelujah. Don't say, Lord, come down. He lives on the inside of you. You just have to learn to, to awaken Him. You awaken Him by blessing His name. You awaken Him by calling upon His name in faith, not just calling on it and using His name indiscriminately as a cuss word or use, speaking, his, speaking the Lord's name in vain. 
but it's calling upon His name in faith, literally reaching out Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He's the true vine, praise God. Hallelujah. And you show me someone that's arrogant and you show me someone that acts like that there's something special and, and, and without humility and I will show you someone that's, that's being religious. They may put on this pious face, but true Spirit of God, the true fruit of the Spirit, Jesus said, without me you can do nothing. The true juice that flows from the vine is the love of God. Love is patient. Love is kind. It endures all things. It believes all things. It hopes all things. It bears all things. Glory to God. When you're able to bear more, it's because the love of God is moving through you. And people say, man, how do you do that? It's really not you. It's Christ in you, praise God. He told Jesus, go, good master. He goes, why do you call me good? There's none good but God. It's the Father in me. He doth the works. Jesus gave total credit to God. Do you know, we, I, we, 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 gotta, we have to re-educate our minds to the Word. Jesus wasn't doing miracles because He was powerful. Jesus understood that, that at that time that God was his vine. Jesus made the... He made, he, i, I got to get this out, man. It just, we've got to educate religious minds to understand that Jesus did, do not, he did, not, did not do miracles because he was the Son of God. He did miracles as the Son of Man. You understand that Jesus was 100% man? 100%. And he was 100% God. Do you understand that you are 100% man and you're also 100% made in God's image? You are a born-again, spirit-filled believer, but you have a body that's born from this earth. You are, you are son of man and you are son of God. Are you not a son of God? If you're not a son of God, you're just as much a son of God as Jesus is. Well, now, preacher, I wouldn't say that. Well, I'm t you should say it. Your mind's not renewed to that fact. But the Scripture is very clear that if you're born again... That Jesus is your brother. That, that God, amen. To as, many as, to as many people as received Jesus, to them God gave the power, the right, and the authority to become a what? Son of God. Now, beloved, are you the sons of God? Glory to God. Hallelujah. As Jesus is, so are you right now in this life. You're just as much a son of God as Jesus is. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You, beloved, are the now beloved. You are the sons of God. It does not yet appear what you're going to be, but when he appears, you'll be just like him. What does it mean that you don't appear? Because you don't have your glorified body yet. He's got his glorified body. It does not yet appear what we shall be. No, because we haven't received our glorified body. But on the inside, oh glory, you and I are carrying the down payment. It's called the earnest of the inheritance. You know what earnest money is? It's when you put some money down on something. You haven't got the, you know, for like Christmas toys. Kmart, Walmart, they have, you can put money down and you can, hold, you can hold things. And if you're buying Christmas presents, you put it on layaway. You put earnest money. Earnest means, earnest means I, I have a desire. I really want this. I can't afford the whole thing right now, but I really want it. And I'm going to put something down to hold it and to show you how much I really want it. I'm willing to put some money down to hold it. I'm going to earn, earnest. I'm willing to show you my great, my great fervent intention. When Jesus, we got born again, we received the earnest of the inheritance. We received the earnest of the inheritance. Praise God. This is good preaching. Hallelujah. We received the earnest of the inheritance. What's the earnest? The spirit of, the, our spirit man got born again. Our spirit man got born again. All the power of heaven is inside your spirit. Glory to God. There's such an anointing here and such an anointing of revelation. There's probably nothing that you haven't already heard, but we need to be reminded of it. All things are possible to him that believes. Why? Have you read the scripture that says that God has given us everything? Has, past tense, given us everything. Where is it? If, if he's given it, where is it? Christ in you is the hope of glory. Christ in you is the hope of glory. Say that out loud. Christ in me is the hope of glory. Say it again. Christ in me is the hope of glory. Quit looking to heaven. Look to the God that's on the inside of you. Start stirring him up. God is, quit. we think God's in heaven. God's in you. God's inside of you. The spirit of God. Jesus said, or the apostle Paul said, don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost and that the spirit of Christ dwells in you? What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of God, the temple of the Holy Spirit? You are the temple, the spirit of glory to God. Hallelujah. 
The Spirit of God lives on the inside of you. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. There's such an anointing, I'm telling you. Praise the name of Jesus. Glory be to God. We bless and praise and magnify the name of Jesus. Hallelujah to the King. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah to the Lord. For the Lord, He is good. Hallelujah, and His mercy endures forever. Oh, I bless Him today. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. He is the true vine. And his father is the gardener. Everything that pertains to life and godliness, does love pertain to life and godliness? Yes, it does. It's already inside of you. Is joy pertain to life and godliness? Yes, it is. The joy of the Lord is on the inside of you and it is your strength. It is not your joy. It is his joy. Jesus said again in John 15, 5. Let me find it again for you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Verse 5. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain. It must remain in the vine. The key to life is remaining in the vine. Glory to God. Jesus said, why do you call me good? There's none good but God. It's the Father in me. He doeth the works. Jesus said in John 5, 19 and John 5, 30, the Son of Man can speak nothing of himself but what he hears the Father say. The Son of Man can do nothing of Himself but what He, hears the, what he sees the Father do. Jesus was very open and very honest and letting people know. that. And the Scripture tells us also, Paul writes, that, that God was inside of Christ. God was inside of Christ reconciling the world to Himself. Listen very carefully. Jesus was doing the preaching... Jesus, you saw Jesus, he was the expression, the express image of the Father in the earth. But the Father was inside of Jesus, giving him the power to raise the dead. The Father was inside of Jesus, giving him the direction at the pool of Bethesda to go talk to that man that had been lame there for 38 years. God sent Jesus to him, and Jesus interviewed him. He felt prompted in his heart to go down there to that man and begin to talk to him. And interview him. Why don't you get in here? Because, well, I try to get in there, but every time I do, someone else beats me there. Jesus didn't know why he was going down there. He interviewed the man. And then all, and it must have dawned on Jesus when he was interviewing him, this is why the Father sent me. Father, because this man's trying to get in every, every year for 38 years. And somebody beats him there. Can you imagine getting up for 38 straight years and trying to get into that pool to get healed? You think he wouldn't get discouraged? He's not getting any younger. He's not getting any stronger. He's been laying on that porch of the pool of Bethesda for 38 years. And now every, he says, every time I get up, do you notice he's still trying? Do you notice that he's still trying? He's still drawing near to God because the angel came down and got in that pool. And that's what's symbolic of draw, drawing near to God, isn't it? So he's, he's, he's trying to get into that water because whoever gets in that water first, no matter what disease or calamity or malady they have, they're healed instantly by the power of God. So he's trying and he doesn't give up. For 38 years he's trying. Do you think maybe that some, a voice spoke to him or people spoke to him and go, why are, why are you even still trying to do this? Why are you even trying to do this? Why do you keep giving the effort? I'll tell you why. Praise God. Because if you're, as you're drawn near to God, God will draw near to you. As that guy was drawn near to the, to the angel from God in that water to get healed, he could not get in there, but he still tried. What did God do? God didn't send an angel to touch him. God sent his own son to touch him. Let me tell you, you draw near to God, and I'll tell you, God, it doesn't matter whatever heaven has to bring to get you free is what heaven will do. If he can, God can come down and do it himself. God can send an angel to deliver you. God can send a preacher full of the Holy Spirit. He can have someone intercede for you. Let me tell you, your job is to draw near to God and to remain in the vine and call out to the Lord and don't you give up. Ask and it'll be given you. Knock, keep on knocking. Seek and you will find. Keep on seeking, keep on knocking. Luke 18, 1, God says, men should always pray and never to faint. Never give up. Men ought to always stay with it. Why? Because as you, st oh, glory. Oh, glory. Oh, hallelujah. Because the anointing of God, right now, God may be using the anointing, the life of God to sustain you. Because it's not yet your hour. There's a time that God's got on a map for all of us to be promoted, to be, to, for us to come into what the world calls your 15 minutes of fame. I believe that every human being on the planet has a touch of the Holy Spirit. I believe God has a plan for everybody's life and God has a plan for your life. And you may not have come into it yet, but as you remain in the vine, receiving His love, receiving His joy, receiving His peace, 
My peace I give unto you, not as the world gives, give I unto you. My peace I give unto you. You know, many times we have to have the peace of God while we're waiting for the plan of God to unfold. And the people all around us are scurrying around and upset and, and frenetic and frantic. Yet you have the peace of God that passes understanding. Yes, you long for the touch of God. Yes, you long to be healed. Yes, you long to be married. Yes, you long for that opening if you want to be in the ministry. Yes, you long for those things. Of course, and that longing is good. That longing is good. That longing within you. Do you know that Jesus, the scripture says that Jesus has long patience waiting for the precious fruit of the earth. Jesus has long patience. He longs for us. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. There's such an anointing here today. Praise God. There's, I mean, I could, I could preach on. I, I could, there's, it's like the, the branches are just going out everywhere and I just see so many things. I'm trying to get the, I'm trying to get the low hanging fruit here, but I'm reaching up for some higher stuff here today. Glory to God. The, the greater the anointing, the higher, the higher fruit you can reach. Praise God. The greater revelations. Glory be to God. There's such an anointing here. Praise God. It's one thing to feel the anointing, but another thing for that anointing, that anointing is a carrier. It carries truths and it begins to burst and explode in your heart. It begins to impregnate you with a fresh purpose and a fresh vision and a fresh hope. Glory to God. It begins to feed your expectations. It begins to fuel your desires. It begins to feed your faith. Praise God. And those who've had droopy shoulders, just lift up the hands which hang down. Praise God. Look whether or, or that which is lame will be turned out of the way. Have you ever read that scripture? Lift up the hands which hang down, let, rather that which is lame will be turned away. People can get so discouraged that they've got a call of God upon their life, but they get so beat down and so, and so like, what do they do? They quit going and praying because they're mad at God or they're discouraged. And the very thing that they need is have to get a touch of the love of God to keep them going. You see, brothers and sisters, there's a time appointed. There's a scripture that declares the time to favor Zion, yea, the set time has come. There's days that God has certain things that He needs done. And he has a certain day that he's going to do things in your life. And until that day, you have to remain in him so that you can endure until that moment where God promotes you. Well, I'm just not getting anywhere. Are you, are you, are you sustaining life? I, I am. I'm, I'm enduring. I'm enduring and I have peace and I have joy. But just, I, wish it, you know, I wish I'd hurry up and get married. I wish I'd hurry up and get that better job. But I'm here to tell you that you're going to get that. And God's going, God has every intention. He's bringing it to pass. But right now, what He gives you in the meantime, until that, those doors can open, God is giving you what? His love to where it comforts you. His what? His joy because you need strength to, for, to endure and to be patient. Jesus isn't sitting around in heaven. When it says He has long patience waiting for the precious fruit of the earth, Jesus is not in heaven depressed right today going, Oh, I wish they'd hurry up and just preach. I'm just so discouraged. Jesus isn't discouraged at all. He has long patience. Long patient people, just, they're, they're just, he's just as joyful and just as peaceful as he can be. You know, we just all get all happy when we get our prayers answered. But you know what? Anybody can shout when the walls are down. But really what, who people really follow and respect are the people who are walking with joy when they haven't got their promise yet. When they are walking with patience and walking in peace and walking with joy. And not a, not a thing has broke their way maybe for a while. But they still maintain this what? They're connect, they stay connected to the vine. Well, if God was going to do something, He'd have done it by now. <laughs> Glory. If He's going to do something, you know, the Bible says that when uh, they walk by Jesus on the cross, they say, wag their heads at Him. They wag their heads at Him. It's like, oh, He, he saved Him. He, he saved others. Let's see, if, let's see Him save Himself. Let's see if God will come down and save Him. And Jesus was on that cross. You know, when he's raising Lazarus from the dead, he goes, uh, they said, if you'd have been here, if you'd have been here, they're upset. Mary and Martha are upset because they told him in plenty of time to get their brother saved and healed before he died. If you'd have been here, the Bible says Jesus, mo he groaned in the spirit. He groaned. We have this attitude, I, I, and I've been guilty of it myself. There's no need for me to lie and act like I'm holier than thou. I've done it myself. I've done it more than once, I'm sure. But this attitude of, well, I'm, just, I'm so glad that God, that God is long patient and long and long suffering towards me because it took me many years to, to get, learn some of these truths and God was patient with me. People weren't sometimes, but God was. And I'm so grateful that God was. And now that God's working these truths in my life, are deeper truths and greater joy, greater peace, when things aren't going your way, but you just still have this abiding peace. I believe that God is trying to develop a root system within us Though the fig tree fell to blossom, there's no fruit on the vine, yet we still praise Him. 
I still believe when things don't go our way, if we can still love God. I believe Job is a perfect example of when he don't understand why bad things have happened to you. You don't understand why, how long, why the length of the trial or the test. But you be, when people around you say, why don't you just curse God and die? His own wife said, curse God and die. His own friends are telling him all the reasons why God has judged him for wrongdoing in his life. And somehow he, he has to battle all those things off while he's dealing with the grief of his lost sons. He lost all of his livestock. He lost his health, and he lost everything except for the people that were condemning him. <laughs> Isn't it funny how the devil keeps those people alive and well? And, 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 the, and, and then God does such a work in him, does such a work in him that, that it had to go, you know, he was seeing no prosperity in his life. But there had to be something that was becoming so rooted and so grounded. Can I just say to you that Job lived to see three more generations of, of family members God gave him double of everything he ever lost. For, the, for your shame, you shall have double, Isaiah 61, 7. For your shame, you shall have double. If we can just endure, and we, here's the deal. If we abide in Jesus, we can endure hardship as a good soldier. We've been taught in the yesteryears in faith churches, and I was part of that. And I thank God for faith, and I thank God for speaking the word, speaking the truth in love. But sometimes we were not taught. That sometimes having, well, we, you know, we were taught having done all to stand to stand. But I think sometimes people thought you could just speak to trials and they would just disappear. And with all due respect, if that was the case, then why did Jesus have to become dumb before Herod? He didn't say a word to Herod. Why did Jesus, why, why didn't Jesus get up when he made, the, it was very clear that I could call for 12 legions of angels and they would come down and they would fight. But he didn't do that because it wasn't the plan of God. So some of the long suffering you're going through is because of the plan of God. It's not because the devil is your Lord or the devil is stronger than God. It's because God, the Bible says very, very clear, that's been appointed unto us not only to believe upon Him, but to also suffer for His namesake. That suffering is not cancer. That suffering is not a car wreck. But you know, the Apostle Paul was in shipwreck. He was stoned. He got beaten with rods. He was, he had, he was in peril with wild beasts. He was false brethren. He was in the wilderness. He was in the deep many nights. He shipwrecked many times. I mean, he went through incredible difficult times. And he got put in jail, put in prison for many years because he preached the gospel. Now, God took those, and we, we wouldn't think that was a blessing. We wouldn't consider it a blessing. But the Apostle Paul understood it was part of the plan of God. Now, you don't hear many Christians on television and preachers talking about, oh, you know, you may have to go to prison for Jesus' sake. Th those don't sell tapes and those don't sell books. But, you, but when you re look at the Apostle Paul's life, you look at Jesus' life. Jesus just didn't die. Jesus suffered and died. Jesus suffered and died. They beat him. They beat him. It would be easier if they just killed him. But he didn't just, they didn't kill Jesus. He gave up the ghost. He suffered and died. Suffering, long suffering. Did you understand that long suffering is a fruit of the Spirit? It is seldom ever taught. But, but we learn obedience. But the Bible says, though Jesus were a son... Yet he learned obedience. He was never disobedient. So it says he learned obedience. It means he learned to stick with the instructions even when things weren't going his way. And you know how you're able to do that? The Spirit of God lives on the inside of you. His love is coming to you. Did you notice that at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing praises? They're put in prison for doing the will of God. The only reason they're in prison is because they did the will of God and they, and they cast the devil out of some woman who had a spirit of divination in her and people were making money off her because she could read the stock market before it ever happened and people were getting rich on her. And when, she, when Paul cast the devil out of her by the Spirit of God, that those magistrates got so upset they put Paul and Silas in prison. What was Paul and Silas, what did they do? Complain and blame God? If we, hadn't, if we hadn't come here to obey you, we'd have never been in prison. We'd never got our backs bloodied. Yeah, they got their backs bloodied. They did the will of God and they got their backs bloodied. Now, what do, you think that, what, what do you think most Christians would say? They'd be offended at God and they'd get upset with God and go, I'm done. The Apostle Paul didn't do that and the Apostle Peter didn't do that once Jesus restored him. It takes time to die to self. It takes time, and God's willing to give you that time, and God is giving us that time. And as we die, Paul said, I die daily, which means this, I depend less on my own strength, and I'm dependent more on his strength. What is his strength? Learning to abide in him, praise God. How do you abide in him? You're already in him. It's just staying connected. He's already inside of you. It's you getting the connection and keeping the connection. Hallelujah. Isn't it good? Remain in me. 
1 Thessalonians 5.17 says, Pray without ceasing. Can't pray all day, all day long, but you can have these little, little spurts of just staying connected with God. Lord, I love you today. As you're walking down the hallway to go to the bathroom, you got your 15-minute break, just walking out to your car for lunch. Lord, I love you today. Lord, I praise you. You're worshiping God on the way to work. You're praising God on the way home. You're just blessing His name intermittently. You're at your typewriter during the day. Typewriter, at your computer, keyboard. Okay, I, I, I'm aging myself. You're at your, you're at your keyboard and, and you just have a moment. Lord, I just praise you. It's, you don't have to have seven one-hour prayer meetings. You can have a, a, a 30 second just staying connected. You ever take your text and text someone you love during the day? You're just staying connected to them. Just stay connected to Jesus. Abide in Him. And let His words abide in you. That's another sermon for another day. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Learning to abide. Learning to abide. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, we'll talk about that next week. God bless you. We'll see you next week. Father, we bless you. We magnify your name. Let these truths seek, sink deep down into their hearts. I, I tell you that God's opening some of your eyes right now. That the suffering you've gone through, you didn't understand it was part of the plan of God. That God has long patience waiting for the precious fruit of the earth. You may not have seen your hour yet, but there's a root system that is as you are abiding in Jesus and blessing His name, you're not murmuring and complaining, or at least it's decreasing. Remember what John the Baptist said, I must decrease and He must increase. The more that you say, I'm, not, I'm tired of murmuring, I'm tired of complaining, the more you, the more, the, the, the less of that you do, and the more of remaining in Him, praising Him, and magnifying His name. God will begin to, it says that the Father's the gardener. God, will, as you begin to believe God for greater strength and greater fruit, God will begin to cut away those branches that are hurting your life and taking people that are abusing you or people that are not respecting you. God will eventually take those things away. And then He'll take you and He'll begin to prune the areas of your life that you are bearing fruit and allow you to continue to go through a little bit deeper things like, well, I, haven't I passed that test? Yes, but he's pruning the bush back so it can even bring double the amount of blooms and, and blessings. <sighs> now, that's the decrease. But as long as you remain in Jesus, while you're going through that pressure cooker, while you're going through that, that time waiting, and, that, and that's the hardest thing for us to do, having done all to stand Stand, therefore. Standing, waiting is the hardest thing we'll ever do. Stand still and behold the salvation of God. It's not by your might. It's not by your power. It's by His Spirit. And, and if we don't abide in Him, remain in Him, what happens if God gives you a promise like He did Abraham and 25 years later it's realized? Abraham still, he still stayed with the Lord. He didn't say, I'll, okay, I'll, I'll check back with you 25 years from now and then I'll start serving you. He had to remain and, and remain in faith and still follow the Lord for 25 years before, that, before his promise came to pass. That doesn't sell a lot of books. But if you look at people's lives, David did not inherit his throne immediately. J Joseph did not, he didn't see his dream come to pass immediately. We're talking 13 to 17 years. John the Baptist was 30 years preparing for six months of ministry. Jesus, 30 years of preparation for three and a half years of ministry. We, don't, we have to understand that God prepared Moses 40 years for 40 years of ministry. We have to understand that God is doing a deep work in us. And while He's doing it, He'll provide the love that you need to sustain you. He'll provide the joy that you need so that you're not walking around depressed all the time. That even while you're waiting, you can still be in a good mood and lift, uplift others. And you can and not just walking around going, what's wrong? Well, I'm just waiting for the Lord. I'm just, I've waited forever. That, that's not, that means you're doing it in your own strength. And the fact that you're withering means that you'll just be cut off and you'll be thrown into the fire. That doesn't mean you're going to hell. It means it's not producing any fruit. People, it says men will gather you up and they'll throw you into the fire, which means you're going to ruin your testimony. Even though you're a Christian, you're going to heaven when you die, people won't respect you because they, they, they can tell you're not bearing fruit. You're blaming God because it hasn't come to pass. It's not God's fault. God has a set time for it. And if you abide in the Lord and allow the grace of God to continue to flow through you, you, if it takes 10 years, what about Joshua and Caleb? Joshua and Caleb spent 40 years in the wilderness for, 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 for the sins of the 10 evil spies. They had, they, were, they had faith confessions. They're, they had faith before God. They tried to stop those ten evil spies. And they tried to stop that, negative, that negativity running through the camp. But the people bought it hook, line, and sinker. And they had to spend 40 more years. There wasn't sin in their life. They didn't have a bad confession. God didn't put them in the wilderness for 40 years. Glory, here comes another anointing. Hallelujah, praise God. Hallelujah, glory to God. 
They, they, they went there because of the, they had to pay the price for the sins of the other 10 evil spies. When they got to be 80, 85 years of age, now it's time to go over. Glory to God. Joshua goes, it's time to go over. They didn't go, well, I was happy about it 40 years ago. They were sustained even 40 years in the wilderness without being bitter against the 10 evil spies. You don't read that they were bitter and they were downcast and they were mad at God and offended because it took so long. When it got time, Joshua goes, Whoa, we're well able. Give me my mountain. Amen. Caleb, Joshua and Caleb, man, they spent 40 years in the wilderness for sins they didn't commit. Now they're the latter part of their life. But when, they was t- when God goes, okay, it's time. All that faith and all that endurance that you abided in me and my words abide in you. And you've sat there and you've meditated the word. You've spoke the word. You've endured hardship as a good soldier. And God goes, well, today's your promotion day. All that waiting is over. Let's go. And they were glad. Let's go. Let's go up at once. Praise God. And they got up and they went. They could have been bitter. They could have been shut down totally because they didn't get it when they wanted it. They didn't get it when they were young. But bless God, they endured hardship as a good soldier. Their hour came and they're in the promised land. And people have named their kids Joshua and Caleb by the millions throughout our generations. Hallelujah. A good, the memory of the just is blessed. And those, those names mean something. Those aren't soap opera names. Those aren't cool names. Those are names of victors, victors and champions of faith. Hallelujah. You hang on. Not on your own strength. You abide in Him and the Father will prune away the things that are wrong and He'll, and he'll, prune, and he'll prune some of the things that are even right so that you can even have more. You come out, you'll be like Job. You'll have double and you'll be blessed and all the blessings in your life will not even compare with the root of righteousness that's been rooted and grounded and established in you. The thing you'll be the most proud of is not your financial blessings, not your new bride, but you'll be glad that you spent your life and invested it in the kingdom of God and you'll rule and reign with Him both now and forevermore. He'll make you a pillar in the temple of His God and you'll be that way for all eternity and you'll be glad you invested your 70 or 80, 90 years in this earth. You'll be glad you invested your life into the kingdom because you'll reap the rewards throughout all eternity in Jesus name I love you I bless you God is for you who can be against you we'll see you next time hallelujah